Now, continue with the business cycle facts. In practice, business cycle researchers measure business cycle fluctuation using one of the following statistics. A, the growth rate of GDP. B, the cyclical component of the Audric Prescott filter data. And C, the data component of the appropriate frequency of a band pass filter. I will show you later that the, the, the one that we privilege that we use very often is the Audric Prescott uh, filter. Now, let's talk about the Audric Prescott filter. Now, it is common to separate growth and cyclical components of the data by applying a filter. In this respect, the Audric Prescott filter has enjoyed widespread application. All right? And so, what is the component of this, or how do we do it? So we want to, suppose we want to decompose the raw data, YT, into a growth trend that we wrote as YT trend equals log of YT capital trend, you see now, and the cyclical component, YT, which is given as this, such that, log of yt, hmm, that's the variable we want to decompose, is equal to log of the trend and log of the cycle. So there are two components. But don't forget that we have said that uh, the log of the, comp uh, the cycle is equal to yt. So in other words, yt will be simply the log of yt less the, the trend. Okay, and so if you can do that, it means we'll be successful in uh, in separating the data into its, the two main components. Okay, so how the HP filter proposed to make this compo decomposition by solving the following uh, minimization problem. I just felt that uh, it's good for us to understand where most of these things are coming from. Okay, so in getting uh, ready or in our ability to separate data into the two components, we need to use this formula proposed by HP filter. HP, uh, HP filter, yes. And so the formula is like this, you minimize some of yt squared plus a certain multiplier lambda of this uh, summation from t equals one to last uh, term t of, look at the components here, the t trend minus in the following period, less the observed trend now, minus trend now, and the trend before, all square. And then subject to, look at this, you recall this is our definition earlier, that is the definition that we had, that to separate uh, our data into the two components. Okay, so that's a optimization or minimization subject to the cost things. So if the data is given as such, you see that the right side of the equation at two four is a known and given number for each period. Okay, is known for a given period. So, and what do we mean? It means for any set of data you have, the choice of data depends on the frequency. And here we have uh, indicated that if we are, if we are dealing with quarterly lambda, 
is always equal to 1,600. In the case of monthly data, the value of lambda is equal to 400. For annual data, value of lambda it is equal to 100. Okay, so once we know the uh, the frequency of the data we are using, it's just sufficient to indicate to read that this is this so, so that uh, when is going to do the uh, optimization operations now, if you take that into uh, into consideration, and that will help give us the value. I mean, the separation of our original data into its components, uh, trend, as well as the cycle. Okay, so now, now what are the business cycle facts that we need? Now, one, there are about five of them uh, enumerated here, and I, I know all of us are used to this. We talk about mean, we talk about standard deviation, we talk about um, autocorrelation, that means the correlation between uh, the same variable but with different lags. And then we talk about minimum and maximum, all right? Now, in case of business cycle facts and for DIG modeling, this, the following are very useful. The number one is the measurement of the amplitude of fluctuation. This is in terms of volatility, uh, sigma or relative volatility, sigma, X, that is sigma of any variable divided by sigma Y. Y represents very often the GDP. So you are talking about the relationship between the GDP and its components. That's what this means. Now, in terms of interpretation, a I mean value and a relative volatility greater than one shows that such variable is subjected to very high fluctuation. The first four autocorrelation coefficient of the filter series also help to determine the persistence of the fluctuation. If the values are strongly positive, then there exists a considerable persistence in the cyclical component of the real GDP. Remember I say, GDP and its components. So everything is done in relation to the GDP. Number two measure is the one called the measurement of the movement of a variable. The determination of the direction of movement of a variable is usually with respect to the real GDP. The sample movement used in this study is a bivariate cross correlation that measure the association between two variables. This statistic called correlation coefficient between two random variables, X and Y, is written formally as this. And I'm sure that uh, most of us we are used to this, uh, we are used to this definition. Okay. Okay, which is simply, uh, this is the autocorrelation that is rho x, y. That is, it's talking about correlation between variable x and y. And so it's giving us the covariation, covariance of uh, x, y, all over sigma x, sigma y, which is the standard division, the product of the standard division of each of the two variables. And the definition is as given on the right-hand side. Okay, so now it's good to recall that um, the covariation is the measure of association, the strength between strength and direction of relationship between two variables. 
Okay, the cap said sigma x, sigma y are simply standard deviation of x and y. T is the terminal observation. So a bar over a variable units is sample mean the values of rho x, y lies between minus one and plus one. The sign indicates the nature and direction of association between the two variables as against measure of causation. Remember, it is uh, when we are talking about uh, regression that uh, the issue of co co causation is very important. Here, we are talking about the strength and direction of association between two variables. Now, researchers are partitioning this interval into several regions with a view to situate the strength of association. So, the criteria for constructing such regions are often arbitrary and do not connote any rigidity in terms of interpretations. For instance, Cohen 1988 suggested the following regions for the interpretation of the coalition using uh, finding psychological results. For instance, if the value absolute of a rho is less than 0 0.1, it means there is no correlation. If it lies between the absolute value of the uh, of rho lies between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, we say that there is a small correlation. If it lies between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, we expect a medium. And if it lies between 0 0.5 and 1, we expect that it's going to be a large correlation between them. In case of business cycle research, the degree of co-movement of a time series data with another one can be measured in line with Ageno et al. 2000 by the value of correlation coefficient written as delta j. Hence, the degree of co-movement between a variable xt and another variable yt is said to be one of the following. If delta, delta j, like we have called it, correlation coefficient is positive, it means to have a pro-cyclical situation, in which case the GDP and its major components are growing in the same direction. Now, if delta J is negative, it means the GDP and its component is growing on a counterfactual uh, trend. And if delta J equals zero, it means there is a cyclical movement. That means there is no uh, particular direction between the two of them. Okay, and this is very important in, um, okay, so now in addition to this, the contemporaneous correlation between a variable yt and its component can be computed. Now, before I go away, the issue of pro-cyclical, counter-cyclical, are very germane to uh, business cycle and to DHG modeling because most of the observations you have you have to be to know whether there is a co movement between GDP and its various components. Okay, so in addition to the contemporaneous correlation between a variable Y and its components, uh, uh, yes, that means you can calculate what we call contemporaneous correlation between two variables. Now, again, standing on the, uh, using the interval of minus one plus one to describe the nature of the direction of relationship for business aqua analysis. In this respect, we say that just within that interval of minus one, one, if the, uh, the correlation coefficient at zero at the origin, 
lies between 0 and 26, 0 0.26 and 1. We say the variables are strongly contemporaneously correlated. If it lies between 0 0.13 and 0 0.26, we say the variables are weakly contemporaneously correlated. And if it is otherwise, that is, it lies between 0 and 0 0.13, we say it is contemporaneously uncorrelated. Okay? So these are the some of the terms that we use. And then the third part is the movement of phase shifts. This includes the trend between GDP and other variables termed co-movement. In this case, the cross-correlation coefficient, data J, indicates the phase shift of variable XT relative to the cycle NYT. Don't forget it's the cycle that we are using now after we have used, used the HP filter. So it's the cycle, that is the cyclical component of the data, okay? Those who will say that XT leads the cycle. If the correlation at J, at J is maximum for positive J, that means each time you get a J positive. Mm -hmm. Uh, each time you get a, a, a positive value when J, when J is positive. Okay, that will give you the maximum. All right, we say the variable XT leads the cycle. Now, if XT is synchronous, synchronous with the cycle, if the correlation coefficient is maximum when j equals zero. And finally, we said xt lags the cycle when j is maximum for negative value. Okay, so those uh, issues of measurement are very important and you find that when you begin to talk about jg, you are talking about which variable leads which one. So the concept of uh, uh, leads, uh, lag, and uh, acyclica all are related. And that's why this one is brought into this. Okay.